Welcome back to Switzer. We're in the middle of the most pronounced downdraft for stocks since the victory of Donald Trump in the US election. So is this a buying opportunity? And if so, what should we be buying? Simon Conn is senior portfolio manager of Investors Mutual. He joins me at the desk. Hi, Simon. How are you? Good, thanks. I, I kind of guess that this is our, our worst sell-off since the election, or was there another one that I've forgotten? No, it's been a pretty much a straight, straight upwards yeah. line since, you know, since Trump got elected, yeah. apart from the day where he was, where he was elected and there was a massive 2% correction and he made a conciliatory speech and it was up 3%, but it's yeah. been pretty, pretty much a straight line since then. Has some of the, the sell-off <laughs> we've seen um, been bad for us because commodity prices have started to retrace after an enormous surge? Well, I think it partly that. I think it was just, you know, very. it's been a very strong rally. So yeah. valuations, obviously, at some point we're going to reach a, a valuation, a point where things got stretched. Mm. And what we saw is actually quite a, you know, narrowish rally. You know, the top 20 stocks, particularly the yeah. banks, and then the resource stocks, mm. particularly, have been very strong over the last couple of months. So, mm. you know, I think commodity prices, obviously, you know, we've seen a pullback in iron ore. Um, you know, the coke and coal price is still strong, but it's temporary because of what's happened with the cyclones. So... Um, you know, I think with commodity prices, it's been so dependent on what the Chinese economy has been doing, mm. and they've obviously put a big stimulus in place. Um, and you've got to question the continuity of that. Um, mm. You know, and so obviously question the you know levels of commodity prices going. And it's forward. interesting. I'm sure a lot of my viewers will be saying, well, "Hang on, Switzer said they got a good Chinese economic reading last week." Tom Elliott said the same thing. Why wouldn't commodity prices respond to that answer? Well, it's obviously about what the commodity prices are implying in the price. And we've already, as we said, we've seen a you know, big, big rally in commodity prices. Mm. Um, so they're obviously pricing in quite a, quite a bit of good news. And I think we're recently sort of seeing a few people saying, all the commentators are saying in China, you know, they've stimulated enough at the early part of the year. Yeah. What we're seeing now is a reaction, you know, the economy was soft in China to the middle of last year. They've stimulated. Um, and now it's, you know, we're seeing a so, you know, potentially softer period. Mm. And a lot of it seems to be based around government stimulus, which, you know, is not long-term a sustainable situation no. to be. And, and, and it has been mentioned that the, the, the Chinese government is actually trying to slow things down um, after trying to speed things up. That's right. Yeah. It's the, the foibles of a centrally planned economy. Yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, what's your, your best guess on where the market's going to go? I know you're a guy who picks out companies, but some of those companies are going to benefit from updrafts or, or lose out from downdrafts. So what's your, your overall feeling about where stocks go this year? Look, I think it's, it's got to be stock specific, Peter. I think, you know, the, the underlying theme in the economy, it's, it's pretty soft. Mm -hmm. You know, it's real wage growth, pretty low. Um, and we're seeing increased cost of living pressures now. So out of cycle, we've seen mortgage rates go up, mm -hmm. so independent of the Reserve Bank. Um, and, the, you know, APRO and ASIC are clearly trying to tap growth in that sector of the market. Mm -hmm. And then the, I just feel that, you know, the average Joe Blow in the street, the cost of living, the things you can't control, like electricity, gas, health insurance, now your mortgage. Mm -hmm. These things are continuing to go up greater than your wage, um, mm. wages growing. And so that's going to crimp uh, cons consumer discretionary. Mm. I think all this stuff we've seen in the headlines about um, the housing market over the last couple of months has been a huge amount of press about that. And that probably feeds on a negative way back to retail confidence as well. So I think it's not necessarily a bad thing that people pull their heads in a little bit and stop borrowing as much because I think that's the one massive Achilles heel in the Australian economy is the level of consumer indebtedness. OK, so, so given that, what, what specific companies look like good value. You said valuations have been stretched, but we also know when the fund manager, start, manager started chasing the big caps, a lot of small cap companies were basically sold because they, they'd made money and they wanted to sort of divert into big caps. Do you think there's a, a group of companies out there that really still look, looks like good value because they were rejected, not because of their, their performance as a company, but fund managers wanted to take profit? Look, definitely there's a few, you know, stock-specific <coughs> situations where, you know, the stocks have traded sideways for some time mm. and, they you know, they look reasonably attractive. And we've just raised some money for, in QVE mm. um, and for the specific purpose that all of those stocks have, have lagged. Um, so things like Sonic... Healthcare, which is a leader in global pathology, has been trading sideways for the best part of... Can you explain what QVE is, mate? So QVE is the X20 listed investment company. Yeah. Uh, market cap about 300... For Investors Mutual. That yeah. Investors Mutual yeah, is the front right. manager for. OK. So we, you know, we set that fund up, uh, the company up, that, um, just over two years ago, two and a half years ago, yeah. Yeah. to focus purely on the X20 sector of the market. OK. And what we've seen recently, Peter, is you know, the, a lot of the rally has been in the top 20. Yep. So a lot of the stocks like the Sonics, the main farmers, the events... Mm. Um, the Caltexes of the lot and the like um, have been sort of left, away, left behind to, to an extent in mm. some of this rally. Um, and we think, you know, there's reasonable value in opportunities in some... OK, let's...
talk Sonic first. Why? What, what, what's so good about Sonic Healthcare? Look, Sonic is one of those companies. It's sort of it's it's you know it's a really strong, resilient business. Fantastic management team. Colin Goldsmith and Chris Wilkes have been running the business yeah. since before '98, um, and it's now a, it's reached a point where it's got a significant uh, presence in the German market. So it's a leader in pathology um, in Germany. It's also a leader in Switzerland. It's obviously the leader here in Australia. Mm -hmm. And they've also got a significant presence in the US market. Yeah. And the great thing about pathology is it's, um, you know, the, as the population ages, yeah. um, more and more people have blood tests. So that drives an underlying level of demand. And the other thing is that as technology improves, you can put more and more volumes through the labs. Yeah. So that underpins a very recurrent, very predictable earnings trend. And the thing about Sonic, and I think the reason that, you know, the stocks maybe traded sideways for a little while is that um, they've been building a significant presence in the German market. They've now developed um, a significant presence in the key parts of the country, and they're now um, stepping out and making small bolt-on acquisitions, mm. and that gives them the opportunity to extract significant synergies. So mm. further acquisitions in those markets um, will be, you know, be more creative than the previous ones. Okay, Main Events is a company you guys have liked for a long time. Main Main Pharma. Main, oh, Main Pharma. Main Pharma. Yes, look, it's it's a company we've owned for a long time, um, and it's pulled back. It got to two dollars after they bought the Tiva acquisition, mm. Tiva portfolio of drugs yep. in the US. But it's, you know, it's got a very, very strong management team, mm. good balance sheet, and it's a really differentiated play on the generic space. Mm. So um, There's no Trump risk with Main Pharma? Look, the, you know, there's a lot of noise around healthcare, and it's all the peers, a lot of the generic players in the US have pulled back because of, um, because of the Trump concerns and funding of healthcare. Mm. But the key thing of, with, with you want to reduce the healthcare budget is that you need more generics as opposed to branded drugs. And this company is a, a key player in the generic space now in the US. It's you know, one of the top, top ten players in that industry. But, but importantly, for Maine Farmers, runs a differentiated strategy. So the product, products that they've got in development and they have in the market currently are typically differentiated. So they've got a delayed release formulation or foams is one of the categories that they've been um, investing in. So that, or, or there's an import license, import restrictions because it's an um, opioid, a morphine-based product, so you yeah. can't import just from anywhere. So there's a differentiation and a niche um, around their strategy which we think underpins, you know, a more resilient um, earnings stream going What forward. about uh, Trump's uh, import tax? Could that you know, affect Maine Pharma? No, look, all the, Michael, all the manufacturing is done locally. Mm. So, you know, they've got a, a significant facility um, already in the US and they're actually expanding it. So they're actually, uh, you know, they're a local manufacturer. OK, so what else do you like? And the other one we've be, um, been buying for um, QVE more recently is Events, which was previously known as Amalgamated Holdings. I think yeah. we talked about that one before. But to explain to, to, to my viewers the businesses, because Events have got some, some well-known names. Yeah, look, you know, Events is not, it's, it's a stock name itself, it's not a well-known name, but, you know, if you go to the movies, you'll know that Events Cinemas, uh, event cinemas is, yeah. is, is, is you know, one of the top three cinema exhibitors in the country. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, that's a fantastic cash-generative business. Um, they also own one of the leading, leading um, hotel chains in the country, Ridges, Ridges, QT and Atura, so the three brands they operate. Importantly, they actually own a significant number of their hotel sites mm. and then they have a management contract arrangement for yeah. further number of sites. Um, and that business has obviously been benefiting from the tourism um, in influx in Australia and also with the dollar being lower, mm. more Australians are holidaying at home. Mm. And then they also operate the Threadbow Ski Field, which okay. is a smaller part Were of Were they affected by dream, the Dreamworld um, incident? No, that's, not, that's, that's, that's isolated to Village and, and um, they don't operate in the theme park sector of the market. Yeah, yeah. OK, right. So the issue with events is, Peter, they, you know, the, the movies last Christmas were a bit soft. Mm. Uh, if you remember previous... Tell me about I hardly went to one. Yeah, well, that's, that, I mean, yeah, so I think that was, that was an issue. And, yeah. you know, every so often we do see products that's not up to scratch. Yeah. Um, Star Wars the year before had been, a, you know, fantastic. A ripper. A ripper. Mm. This Christmas didn't look so good. Mm. Um, the result was a little bit soft. Obviously, the expectations were for something better. Mm. And the share price has fallen to the point where it's kind of captured about $2 billion. But the market value of their property is, capped at about, is, is worth about $2 billion. You just it hasn't got much debt. Mm. Pays a good yield, sort of, you know, 16 times. Yields about 4%. So mm. it's a pretty it's a really solid... It generates lots of cash, very conservatively managed by David Sargent. Um, yeah, it's a good little business that's done well for us. It's, it's funny, mate, you remind me how bad the movies were that I took my 88-year-old mum to see um, the, the best picture uh, from the Oscars and after 10 minutes she, she yelled at the top of her voice, this is the worst movie I've ever seen <laughs> and the whole cinema laughed with her. Um, so, all right, but basically, you know, talking about but all these three companies, on your valuations, they look, they look a pretty good value? Yeah, look, these things look, look reasonable value. So, you know, events at 16 times, mm. um, Sonic on 17 times next year on a yield of close to 4%. Mm. Um, you know, Main Farmer on 14 times this year, going to 13 times next year. Mm. Um, Tox Free is another one we like and we've been adding to that. That's on sort of 14 times mm. next year's earnings. 
Um, that's been a business that's came from Western Australian origins. Uh, so what businesses solid... again? Tox Free Solutions, yeah. so TOX is the code. Yeah. Um, got a very strong set of assets in the industrial and hazardous waste sector of the economy. Yep. Waste is a is a um, you know it's an essential part of output out of industry and households. Um, it's not going to go away. Um, and this company owns a lot of the licensed facilities which treat that waste stream. Mm. And those licensed facilities create a really strong barrier to entry. Mm. Um, and they've got a really good portfolio of assets. They're one just... quick, one quick one. So I'm sorry, they're trying to wind me up. You're right. But with, but with Sonic, and Main Pharma, do, would they be benefits beneficiaries of a lower Aussie dollar as well? Yes, obviously yeah. they've got significant overseas exactly. earnings, so mm -hmm. they'd benefit. From and what are you guys tipping on the Aussie dollar? I know it's hard to do it, but what do you reckon? Look, I'm not. I've given up long long term <laughs> forecasting. I think it trades around 75 percent long term, 75 cents. But you know, it can move within. It can move in a wide range given sentiments. Right, mate. Thanks for joining currency. Us. OK, thanks, Peter. That's Simon Conn from Investors Mutual coming up after the break. Is any publicity really good publicity? We'll find out after the break with Adam Ferrier from Cummins and Partners.